Alrighty folks, this is Lurch from Ireland Gaming and welcome back to From the Depths. I'm finally in the stable branch, hurrah! And after the huge success of the last video, can you believe Nick put it in the main menu? I still can't believe it. It's absolutely incredible. I've been answering comments solidly for the last day. It's been pretty amazing. But I'm here to bring you something that I've been holding pretty close to my chest. This change happened during the steel or during the dev test branch, but I didn't mention it because I wanted to save it until everyone had access to it. And now we have an interesting little quirk with the the no loader system that I am that I showed off in a previous video. So remember in the last video I said that you couldn't use any more than one input feeder. Well, that has changed. Now ammo feeders will queue up if they're unable to input their ammo. So if you have a cannon with two inputs on it, it can fire one shell and then the other one will tick straight away afterwards. And that actually makes these systems pretty practical. Now, I'm not going to say that it's overpowered in any way because you can easily get a better shell with like a, a belt feeder and that will actually give you a better input and it'll take up, yeah, a couple more blocks but this lets you build some seriously compact cannons. Now, I've got a couple of different examples this time. Uh, rather than just going with straight cannons, I'm going to use some of the uh, sort of interesting things that I've come up with in the past to demonstrate it. Now, this one is one of my cannon carousels, but this, it's a little bit different. Um, before we get it spinning, let's just yoink off the insides here and we can see what this thing's actually made of. These are four of the same, and wait. You can see there is a local weapon controller in the middle with a wireless on top because with these spin block turrets you have to have the local, local weapon controller on the actual turret itself or on the spin block otherwise it doesn't work you can't connect it to the bottom like you can with a, tur uh, a regular turret so this has to be within two blocks of all your firing pins so there's one there and there's also another weapon controller down there and that gives you like a fairly sort of solid four block slice that you can repeat I've taken the damper off the top. I've managed to squeeze quite a few dampers on these. What is the recoil? Let's find out. 9,400. It's not absolutely enormous. These are pretty high caliber uh, cannons. Well, 120 millimeters, single barrels, but let's uh, get it spinning and I'll just quickly demonstrate it. Let me add it. Uh, test. Whee! Okay, let's get off this. Out of build mode. It'll not be too bad without that. Right, so this is AI-1, so let's bring up a Kalmar. This per Kalmar is going to get an awful doing. And I think I've got the weapons selected. There we go. And that is with no auto loaders at all. There are two loaders, one on either side of the firing pin. It's, uh, dizzy dizzy. Let's get this one off, because I think I deleted them by accident, did I? No, I've only got one. Okay, right, these guys have single inputs. Sorry, I forgot about that. Right, these ones are use single because with these carousel turrets, you don't really need a fast refire, and I found that using multiple barrels with these, there was like a bit of an offset with how fast they could offload their their shells, and having it any lower than about 120 millimeter made it a bit crap. So, these are a very, very effective way to do it. Um, it's very efficient, there's not very many pieces to these cannons, and they actually put out reasonable damage. See <laughs> large chunks flying off that Kalmar there. And it's just this cannon firing on its own. So yeah, that's a pretty fun little way to use these no auto loader cannons and keeping the things compact. My previous cannon carousels were all much, much bigger and they were deeper into the hull and all that. But with this one, it's, it's only, f what, six blocks tall from the very bottom. Nice and easily armored base here as well. So yeah, that's an interesting one. So, let's get rid of you, and uh, you can stop, that'll be fine, you can spin along. We'll move on to the next example. This one I'm particularly happy with. Um, yeah, it, it's, I think, a little bit overpowered, actually. Now, this is a 3, no, 292 millimeter. 292, closer to 293 millimeter cannon. It has four gauge increases and three coolers and two ammo inputs. Now, I have tuned this so that it works. It the, app, the barrel cools down in just the right time for it to fire two shells in a regular time. 
Now because this has two ammo input feeders, this essentially gives it the same reload speed as a single autoloader. But if you had a single autoloader, you would also need the two inputs anyway. So, if you want to make a cannon that only has one autoloader, you're actually better to just use the inputs and put it directly into the firing pin, as long as you can put it on both sides of the firing pin. You know, you really need to be able to get them in there, and it can be quite fiddly to get them uh, to sit right. So this is like a 293, close enough, and it's a Gunpowder HE. Very, very simple little warhead, 9 meter explosion, 889 damage. Pretty good. But let's, let's just set this guy in action. Now, let's get something a little bit bigger than that. We'll use a Bastion. Whoa, there we go. You're a loud fella, aren't you? Now, the ammo, the reload time for these shells is 20 seconds. Sorry, that's the uh, the shell to clip time, which, uh, as I explained in the last video, the shell to clip time is essentially your reload time whenever you're using these ammo inputs directly in, because it doesn't have anywhere to buffer their shells. That's two or three salvos, and that's a lot of damage to this per bastion here. So you can see, there's not much to that cannon. Yes, it's a big gun, but there's really not, not much to it. It's all above deck. It's only like three or four blocks, four blocks tall, yeah, four, five, including all the armor. And it's got five enormous firing pieces there. And that's a bastion completely dead. I honestly think this particular cannon is extremely powerful for its size. You could really lay the deck of these things and uh, I built something a little bit stupid to show you in a little minute as well. Um, something that goes along with my coastal defense uh, but yeah I'll not I'll not spoil it for you anyway next this is the world's smallest minigun smallest minigun I swear to god it's ridiculous I think the gun is made up of like 11 parts it's uh, absolutely tiny and I use ammo input feeders this is simply a firing piece and five ammo input feeders with a little omni mantlet and a couple of barrels. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. And it's actually pretty good. Uh, I was initially trying it with the uh, just a one block like Sabo shell and it's completely rubbish. It's 24 millimeters guys. It's absolutely rubbish. Let's see. Oh no, sorry. 21 millimeter. Pretty crap. But with a little bit of fiddling, and I did actually play with this little guy for quite a while. It's on a two axis turret too, which is really cool. Uh, it helps cut the cost down. Incidentally, I noticed um, I used to use like the the AA mantlets for basically everything, just all the time. Then I realized something. We've got localized resources now, right? We have to worry about costs. So we have this Omni mantlet. It's one thousand RP, and this is the one I've been spamming. It's seven thousand RP. Absolutely crazy expensive. So don't use AA mantlets unless you actually really need them. <laughs> I discovered this the hard way. But, yeah, that was the reason I put this on a two axis, so that I didn't have to use the AA mantlet. But you would be surprised just how effective this little fella is. Now these shells are, with the new gunpowder scaling, they're still a very, very gunpowder heavy shell. Just, we'll get this down to the 21 millimeter. Ah, oh, damn you, two, one. 147 damage, 28 AP, 628 muzzle velocity, which means that it can hit pretty much all AA targets. And I also plunked a tracer round in there. It's a 641, very, very close to the 628. It gives me a nice big accuracy boost. So let's get this little fella shooting. So now it is weak as pish, really. It, it's a tiny, tiny 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 little gun but you might be surprised what the fire rate's like even considering it's based on the shelter clip time come on fella oh yeah turn your off first there we go and our lovely tracers this poor little duster is gonna get taken out fairly soon i know it's not a dramatically impressive cannon by any means but it's super duper duper cheap like really super duper duper cheap and it, it's made up of absolutely nothing. It's not explodey. And I honestly think this is probably nearly as good as the Ru as Ruger's CIWS cannon. Strictly because of the reduced cost. It's absolutely 
minuscule. I think this actually this entire firing, uh, this cannon in itself, costs about uh, eight thousand RP, and cannons are pretty expensive. Actually, let's just find out. Here's a great way of finding out exactly how much your cannon costs. Now, I always have this one here, this uh, one new module subconstructible, so I can save random stuff and figure out the cost. This turret costs. 460 or 4,634 RP, next to nothing. It's uh, this is a really handy way of figuring out the cost of turrets. Like these are some of the old ones. There's a Hydro Coastal Defense, 103,000. Like pretty crazy expensive. But this little guy is really quite effective, and yeah, very very happy with it actually. I will probably use something like this, maybe with a little bit of the less of the armor in uh, in future builds. Yeah, happy with them. Or maybe use multiple firing pins. Hmm. Firing pieces, sorry, I know that annoys some people. Anyway, yeah, very effective, nothing to it gone. Oh, I'll just, I'll strip the armor off here quickly as well, so you can have a look at what it's actually made of. And there, you'll, you'll not be surprised that there's really not much to it, is there? Yep, that's it. That is all of it, the entirety. All the little bits. And the barrel actually only needs to be like two meters, but I kept it at four for accuracy. Very, very effective little gun for all that it's made up of. And you can actually, if you want, stick a gauge increase on the back here and still have four inputs. And it, it's still relatively good at that in that configuration, but I find this one seems to work just as well if you give it a really long shell to work with. Because... Um, the gunpowder scaling is really, really low with lower calibers. You, you don't have to have a ridiculously long barrel to actually make them effective. So lower caliber guns, you can still get like really, really fast shells. Anyway, I'm sure you've been wondering what this stupid thing on the end is. Well, remember I was talking that we can now queue up the ammo inputs. One of the biggest problems with these stupidly long shells, now this is a 10 meter shell, I don't want to go too crazy because honestly after about 10 meters it gets really stupid. The The reload time scales up ridiculously and it, it's just not in any way practical. This was my attempt to make it somewhat practical. I failed. I'm sorry. I totally failed. It is not practical in any way. Uh, let's just do our little trick to see exactly how much this costs. 262k. Yeah, not gonna happen. But, each one of these has four inputs. That's right, four inputs. You see where I'm going with this? It has quite a significant cooldown time still. It's about 20 seconds, but it's got a 140 second shell to clip time. So it takes two and a half minutes for it to actually reload from the shell for each one, giving us four shells in that time. Four shells times six. So yeah, I'm sure you want to see this guy fire. Let's get something bigger. Now, I'm going to drop out of this and just take control of these cannons. Actually, I'll just leave the AI off. That might be a better idea. And we'll get something really big and stumpy to shoot at. Um, Kingstead. I like shooting at Kingsteads. And we'll turn his AI off just so he doesn't shoot back. We haven't got enough defenses for this sort of stuff. And we'll get over here so we can have a really good look at how stupidly big these shells are. This sh that should be reloaded by now, seeing as it's been sitting on the platform for a while. The only problem with these no-loader cannons, you can see on the left-hand side of my screen, shell is too long for the shell rack and cannot be accepted. You'll be getting that uh, message a lot if you're using this system. Yeah, I think the Kingstead needs a couple of tweaks since the little change to the ammo uh, or arm air pumps. Poor guy seems to be spinning wildly right at center axis. Belly up. Looks like he wants tickled. Oh, so cute. Well, let's tickle him. On you go, boys. Boom! <laughs> These are absolutely brutal penetration depth uh, shells. They, pe they, they go about maybe five meters in and just make a little bit of a hole. Just a teensy hole. Now, we have about a 20 second recycle time. There we go. Here's the second salvo. And another bloody enormous hole. Pretty good, eh? 
There goes all of your fuel, my friend. Didn't need all of that anyway. We should have another salvo coming very soon. Come on, don't make a liar out of me. There we go. Where did it even hit? Oh. <laughs> Savage. Savage damage. Well, you know, come to think of it, considering the cost of a Kingstead and the cost of that ludicrously big cannon on the end there, I mean, these are four and a half million RP, uh, and it did just disable it in one considerable salvo. Yep, there's another big asshole. Yeah, these cannons are effective. They they are. They're they're cheap. They you can send absolutely stupidly big rounds out of them. But for these particularly big ones, they have one absolutely killing feature that means that they're not practical. Whenever you load this guy into play, if it has no ammo in the input, like if it's not already reloaded, if it hasn't reloaded already, you gotta wait the whole 140 seconds for it to reload and fire for the first time. So your gun is essentially out of action for two and a half minutes at the start of the fight. That is a deal breaker. It really, really hurts these guns. Only the really particularly high caliber ones, these smaller ones, because it's not really, really ludicrously high, it's still pretty effective. But for these really big ones, sorry, it's, it's just not gonna happen. These guys are for fun and stupidity only. And I've been talking for ages now and we're still gonna have to wait another 30 seconds or so before it actually reloads. So, yeah. It's a bit disappointing that we can't use these stupidly big shells, but there is a reason we only have up to 8 meter loaders. Oh, there we go again. That's not too bad. Oh, one full salvo and it nearly takes it completely out. So, <laughs> okay. You're showing me up here, buddy. Anyway, I have one more cannon type to show you and I'm gonna have to go and get a different platform to that. And it makes use of this particular one, and I think I've come up with something, while absolutely ludicrously stupid, is actually pretty powerful. So I'll be right back. So, the 5 barrel 293mm, uh, the one that I thought was pretty powerful, I went and did something really stupid with it. I call this the no loader floater. It doesn't really conjure up the nicest of images, but it's actually pretty powerful. <laughs> This takes advantage of the new localized resource system. It's only got a very, very small amount of barrels on the inside for ammo. I think there's only about six of them, maybe. And, uh, hold on, turn the UI on, that will help. Five of them. We have five barrels. It even uses connectors. My god, who uses AI connectors these days? But, these are mounted on two turrets on either side of a central block. The central block is held by a docking clamp. And the resources, the ammo in particular, is transfer transferred from this fortress into this turret. The docking rig is on a turret of its own, and on the turret is a missile controller. The missile controller allows this local weapon controller to point this turret at enemies. And it's the only real way to do it without building like a specific like weapon turret and then bolting a docking clamp onto the back of it. As long as there's some sort of firing mechanism, like a, a firing piece from the advanced cannons, one of the firing pieces from the old custom cannons, you can use either, you can use these missile controllers or you can actually use a laser firing piece as well. All of these will make the turret count as a, an actual turret and allow the weapon controller to actually aim them. But because this is on a docking rig, and these turrets are actually sideways mounted, this thing has a full arc of fire. It could fire all the way up, all the way down, all the way left, all the way right. Very, very good. But there's one really interesting quirk that makes this, well, a very interesting weapon. There are quite a few recoil dampers on this, and with the advanced cannons on a docking rig, you are susceptible to recoil. So when these extremely high caliber weapons fire, we get a very interesting result. Whee! <laughs> now they have about an 8 second refire, maybe 9, and that gives it time to just sort of get roughly back into position <laughs> before it shoots again. Oh, I love this thing. It's really stupid. It's, um, it is actually quite powerful. Oh, well, there you go. That was a bastion, by the way. That was two salvos. 
Yeah, two salvos. It's pretty crazy. There's a shell customizer in here. I think these are actually teeny tiny shells. Where are you? The shell customizer. Hello. Yep, Gunpowder HE. But there's 10 of them. 10 500 millimeter or 300 millimeter Gunpowder HEs. Not too shabby. But I think I'll leave you with that thing. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've really kind of broken the game with this one. I love it. It's so ridiculous. But yeah, you can have some fun with those. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the episode. Any likes, subs, or comments are really, really awesome. I love hearing from you guys, and I read every single comment. As always, take it handy, and have a bloody good day.